Jayhawks. We've got the Kansas Jayhawks rocking and rolling right now. 3-0, just stunning everyone involved in the college football world. They're going to take on another team with an equally impressive start to their season. Kansas is going to be tested. Their final non-conference game taking on a perfect 3-0 team in the Duke Blue Devils, led by Mike Elko, who has been a defensive coordinator at a whole bunch of schools, but Devin Gardner, he's never been a head coach, which means that this 3-0 start means he's never lost. Yeah. He is taking on Lance Leipold now in his second year at Kansas, a similar wonderful start for that program that had been so down over recent years. Yeah, Duke's def defense has been really, really good. And you can tell it has, he has his fingerprints all over this team. He's been a great head coach to this point. Let's see if he can stay perfect. Sell out in Lawrence. Duke won the toss. They decided they want to take the option to the second half. So Kansas will start on offense. The touchback puts the ball at the 25-yard line. The story with Kansas football offensively, Jalen Daniels has been just a maestro this year. I mean, special, true, true dual threat. And a lot of people are going to watch his, his tape and watch some of his games and say, oh, yeah, maybe he's just a runner. Absolutely not. If you stack that box, he's going to be able to drop back and tear you apart as a passer. He plays on time. He plays with rhythm. And obviously, those legs are going to help him make that third play. And he is helped by a phenomenal offensive line. They start with a fullback in the backfield. First play of the game is a handoff to Devin Neal. Neal has 10 yards. Stiff arm to get out of bounds. A pickup of 11. Let's take a look at the lineups. We start with Kansas. We told you about that offensive line. Bostic, Pooney, Nowitzki, Ford, and Cabledew. They have not allowed a sack this year. And, and, and the young quarterback is helping him out too, right? He's moving around, and, and anytime they do make a mistake, maybe or miss a block, he's able to save them with his legs and get the ball out. Offense hadn't been a problem at all for Kansas. They averaged 51 points per game. This is the keeper, Daniels, powers to the 45. So a gain of 11 on the first play, a gain of nine on the second play. This, this quarterback is going to give this defense fits because of his ball handling ability and quickness in the hole to make guys miss and get vertical. He's a decisive runner. He doesn't dilly-dally around. He gets that ball and goes when he makes a decision. No dilly-dallying with Daniels. Neal and Lachlan are in the backfield next to Daniels. Now they split Lachlan out. Look at that offensive line. Pure pocket and a pure taser shot all the way down to Trevor Cardell. 22 yards on that pitch and catch. That was an absolute laser beam from the right arm of Jalen Daniels. I mean, how about Jalen Daniels getting through his entire read, going to hit his tight end on kind of a post-basic cross, and the accuracy and ball placement, that's good defense. That's very good defense when he's able to put that ball in there. He is exceptional to start this game. That's exactly what I saw on film, getting through full field reads and then getting to the right guy. Here's Neal. Another chunk play for the Jayhawks. Look at Neal go inside the 10. Darius Joyner saved the touchdown, but it's a gain of 24. You gotta love an athletic offensive lineman, and you're allowing guys to pull around, pin and pull, and then Devin Neal. We didn't talk about him much in the open because of Daniels, but Devin Neal's a guy who played as a true freshman a year ago, has changed his body a bit, lost some of that high school kid, 17-year-old baby fat, and he is running the ball extremely well this year as well. A big part of why this running game is so explosive. Neal still in the game, along with Daniel Hyshaw now in the backfield. And not much there for Hyshaw. That's the first real stop of any sort for this Duke defense. Oben, Carter, Franklin, and Anthony up front. Anthony is a true freshman starting mm -hmm. on the defensive line. Getting uh, Dorian Mayusi back is Duke. That's a good thing. Wasn't able to play last week against North Carolina A&T. And there's your secondary. These uh, 11 defenders for Duke, they have been very opportunistic. They've been ball hawks. They've been winning the turnover battle all season long. They'd love one right here. Second down and goal. Daniels keeps it. Daniels to the four. 
Five yards, it'll bring up third down. One thing you'll notice, folks, keep a close eye on Jalen Daniels. He is Houdini yeah. with the football. You just don't know where it is sometimes. Yeah, I mean, he his ball handling is something I noticed right away on film. And I'm just telling you, it looks like he gives the ball every single play. And for a defense, that is devastating. That's a great tackle by Daytron Young, getting him down in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Quarterback keeper, Daniels lunging down to the one. Oh, my goodness, he's bought a, a sunflower seed away from a touchdown. I don't even think Coach Leipold is going to think about this. I think he is going to go. He got a sellout crowd. He's excited. His quarterback is fighting for inches, and I think that they are going to get in this end zone here. He's going for it. And sellout crowd, 47,000 and change. They yeah. want the six. You can't disappoint the, the crowd, right? You gotta, and, and I'm going to keep the ball in, in Daniels' hands. This is going to be a read option between Daniels and Neal. There it is. They give it to Neil. Did he? He did not. Duke, they hold. The Blue Devils bend, but don't break. And Kansas denied the first time with the ball. Eight plays, 74 yards, and zero points for the Kansas Jayhawks. What a job finding a way to stop this explosive offense from getting in the end zone. This drive has been masterful, but you find a way. Do you see the guy that's back? Dorian Mayusi, who didn't play a week ago, comes back and makes a big stop. We are back. Look where that ball is. Kansas Jayhawks went 74 yards. First time they had the ball that then were denied on the one-yard line. And now they're on defense. Duke's first offensive play is just a quarterback keeper trying to keep the football away from the goal line. We take a look in the middle of the screen. Dorian Mayusi, who didn't play a week ago, had some injury deals, but he comes in and redirects and stops Neal right before he's able to get to the goal line. How about having your defensive leader, emotional leader from Detroit, Michigan, back in the lineup? Pays big dividends here early. Gain of one on first down. Carry for Jordan Waters. Uses his 214-pound body to get out to the five-yard line. Riley Leonard, sophomore from Fairhope, Alabama, just outside of Mobile, is the quarterback. Man, love talking to him a week ago. Just so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, right? Just happy to be here and, and, and really playing really good football. Now, in this situation, third and three, they are not afraid with, with his back against the wall to drop back and pass. We saw a couple weeks ago throw a nice deep ball to, to convert. Duke 3-0, coming off a win last week at home against North Carolina A&T. From his own end zone, Leonard, who can really run, is not going to get to the first down line. Gang tackle and brought down at the nine. Leonard got hit hard. Well, when you got big 30 coming to hit you, Rich Miller, who is the team's um, emotional leader. A year ago when we talked to the coaching staff, they said if we had a bunch of Rich Millers and could bottle him up and put him all over the field, we would be a much better team. Well, this year, a lot of people are feeding off of his energy, his intensity, and that's why this Kansas defense is playing a lot better football. Porter Wilson from his own end zone. That is a phenomenal boot all the way down to the 28-yard line. Nice return, and it's O.J. Burroughs on the return. So, Kansas, they've got it back. Scoreless in Lawrence. Welcome back, everyone. Two high-scoring offenses not able to score the first time they touch the football. It is a scoreless game between Duke and Kansas. Let's take a look at your team goal sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for a living. Let's partner for all of it. Yeah, I mean, for, for Duke, you definitely have to set the edge. You have to find a way. They haven't done a good job to this point. Set the edge. You can't let Daniels get on the edge. Most teams haven't done a good job of that. And you have to be on the same page on offense. On offense, you had that one interception a week ago because they weren't on the same page. And for Kansas, you got to start fast. They started this the two games down 14 as you get a, a great run up the middle by Daniels and then you got to disguise intentions for the young quarterback Riley Leonard and make sure he doesn't see what's coming. Jalen Daniels and that Kansas offense was close to perfect on their opening drive with everything they did except for scoring. They stalled at the one yard line. Now they've got it back. 
They pick up 10 yards on first down. So a fresh set of downs. Kansas averaging close to eight yards per carry early in the ball game. I mean, that matches their seven point whatever on the season. Oh, and a rare inaccurate throw from Daniels. Trying to squeeze it to Quentin Skinner. It is second down at 10. What you saw last week was, was do bat some balls down at the defensive line position. And so when you're a quarterback and you've seen a team that is good at batting balls down, it, it makes you a little weary when you're throwing those slant routes over the middle. And I think that's a lot of what you saw there on that last throw. But for Daniels, you got to make sure you just throw these balls uh, uh, consistently and don't worry about batted balls. Making it through the first line as Highshaw gets to the 40-yard line, tackled by Darius Joyner. But he's going to be short of the line to gain. It'll bring up third down and three. That Darius Joyner is a tackling machine. I mean, I love to watch this young kid fly out of the middle and make tackles and make play after play. And in the passing game, this Duke defense as a whole is very good at passing pass breakups. They break this ball up in the passing game, and they're going to have an opportunity here on third and three. Nine runs, just two passes in our first quarter for Kansas. Third down and three. Highshaw. It's going to bring up decision. He didn't get there. It's fourth down, Devin. What's the thought process here with Kansas? I, I think you kick this ball away and, and make Duke drive the field, right? They didn't prove that they can do it. I, I kick this ball away, try to pin him inside the 10, inside the five, and make the young quarterback make, and make, make some plays. Now Lance Lightbolt doesn't agree. He has the offense out there. They're going to go for it on fourth down. So they're going to give him a gain of nothing on that last play, and it's going to stay at fourth and three. Now, you have the quarterback to do it, right? That triple option, those different options are all there. Third down, straight drop back. This is Neal. And he's got the first down. Brandon Johnson holding on for dear life, but just couldn't slow down Devin Neal. Now that's a nice job. And the, the important part of this play is getting Neal the ball quickly so that he can make a decision and try to drag this player to the, to, to the first down. Great job. He sees him, faces up, and he uses his powerful legs to drive and go reach out for the first down. If that ball get, got there late, then he wouldn't have that chance. Very nice job by Daniels getting that ball out quickly and understanding the situation. Highshaw replaces Neal behind Daniels. Daniels keeps it. Daniels in the open field. Inside the 10 to the 6. Shaka Hayward brings him down, but it's a huge gain for Daniels. 30 yards. If I'm a defender for Duke, you can't tell me that this ball isn't given. They're all sucked inside, and then he turns around, uh, gets around the edge, and makes a huge play. That was a key for a team goal for Duke. You have to set the edge, and they're not doing a very good job. Daniels gets on the edge, and another big play. Way to protect the ball at the end. And bad news for Duke. One of their best defenders, Dorian Mayusi, is slowly jogging off the field. That's why we have a an official timeout right now. Mayusi, who did not play a week ago in the win against North Carolina A&T, has to leave the field now in a first and goal for Kansas. A week ago, he had a lower body injury, not specified, but he wasn't able to play and they held him out. Then he comes into today, he already has made a big play and made a big impact. Losing him is going to be devastating with this explosive run game of Kansas. Cam Dillon, number 35, replaces Mayusi defensively for Duke. 35 no slots. We played well a week ago. Daniels, little jump pass. Touchdown, Kansas. Trevor Cardell. Sellout crowd in Lawrence. Loving every minute of it. Third catch on the season, second here in the first quarter for Cardell, and it gives six to the Jayhawks. Ball handling, I mean, the, the eyes of Duke's defense, they're gonna have to get to the sideline and figure it out because their eyes are in the wrong place, and it seems like every single time, Daniels knows exactly where to go with the ball. Jacob Borchilla, center cut. Seven plays, 57 yards, the six yard touchdown pass to Cardell. Everything is coming up roses for the Kansas Jayhawks.
FS1 College Football is sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. And the band plays on. Jalen Daniels, man, he's a cross between Mario Chalmers, Paul Pierce, and Wilt Chamberlain when he walks the Lord's canvas these days. Hey, you see Cordell walk up. MOC. <laughs> Cordell walks up and gives him a kiss on the head. <laughs> Thank you, brother, for putting me in that end zone. <laughs> Uh -huh. Tight ends, man. They don't get enough love, man. They got to make sure they show that quarterback some love. Give me the ball. Very nice. This is going to be an important possession for the Duke Blue Devils. They have just been getting skunked here 10 minutes into our game. Reversing field, trying to make a run. That's uh, Jatavius Robertson. It's going to be decent field position for Duke. But last two weeks for Kansas, they didn't get out of the shoot well, Devin. They did not. They started down 14, and that's why one of the team goals was they have to start fast. Well, I think they've done that. I agree with you. On the other hand, Mike Elko's Duke Blue Devils, they've been starting up games very fast, very well. Yeah. These are the first quarter scores through the first three games, shutting out teams, putting up points. But right now, up against it. They were three and out, first time with the football. Leonard passes complete. That's Eli Pinkle. And Pinkle makes something out of it. It's going to be close complete. to the first down marker. They give him nine, second down and one. Pinkle's slowly becoming one of Riley's favorite targets. He's the ex receiver. He's always going to have that single matchup. And then he's going to make plays when the opportunities arise. Let's see if Leonard can continue to find it. Riley Leonard completes his first pass. That's become a thing for him. This is Jordan Moore, and Moore gets the first down, but pays the price. Gets slammed by Melo Dotson. Still haven't taken a look at the starters for Duke offensively. Here's your offensive line. Just like Kansas, they've been very good this year. I love Jacob Monk. He's a, he's a guy that can get on the edge and pull, and, and, and he's special at that center position. Skill position, guys. Whole bunch of Jalen's and Jordans, huh? <laughs> Jalen Coleman is the back in the backfield next to Leonard. Leonard, deep ball. Getting greedy. Got it! Pankle's got it at the five! Eli Pankle, a huge play for Duke. They know that these corners love to break on ball, so they go double move and burst. Very nice job by Pankle slowing his feet and then bursting and trying to get past. And this is a perfect throw. The defense is there. The, the move doesn't work. And the ball is dropped perfectly in the bucket. You got to love it. 49 yards on the reception by Pankle. Coleman. Touchdown. Duke. That's how you answer. The Duke Blue Devils took a punch maybe the first time all season long, and they answer with a punch of their own. Jalen Coleman, that's his fourth rushing touchdown on the season, and the crowd stunned. That's the way you silence a crowd on the road. You come into Lawrence, Kansas, and you find a way to respond with a chance to tie this game up. Charlie Ham for the extra point. Damn. Love it. Four plays, 66 yards, only one minute, 39 seconds. That's 99 total seconds to score the touchdown. Good job. It's going down for real. Two 3 0 teams, both with seven points at the 340 mark of our first quarter. Duke and Kansas showing off some offense. Of course, and both these quarterbacks on both sides, ball placement is something that really stuck out. Look at that. The hand of the defender is in between the arms, and the ball drops right on the 10 fingertips of Pankle. That's an outstanding throw and, and an outstanding response with an opportunity to make it a tie game. Pankle's got uh, a real knack for long receptions without getting a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks right. ago you're in exactly Northwestern, right. <laughs> he set the record at Duke for the longest non-scoring pass reception. What was it, 91 yards? It was very long, yeah. and he did not get in the end zone. Get end zone. And, and you said it's probably because his mouthpiece isn't in. His right. mouthpiece always Don't popping. mouthpiece in there. Slowing him down. <laughs> but guess what? He tracks that ball well, and he can catch it. Touchback. 
Ball will be brought out to the 25 yard line. This will be an important drive for Duke. Can they slow down Kansas? They didn't the first time. They were fortunate to get off the field when they failed to score from the one yard line on fourth down to begin yeah. the game. But then an almost easy second drive resulting in a touchdown. You don't know the scary part about this. When we talked to Coach Koto Nicky about the offense, he said it's a profile offense with some spread confident, uh, concepts and very multiple. We haven't even seen the triple option aspect of this offense. It's still pretty vanilla here at the onset. Oh, a little end around. This is McBride. Steven McBride, the first time he touches it, gets out to the 30. Jalen Stinson runs him out of bounds. Number 19, Stephen McBride. McBride from Napoleonville, Louisiana. There's a lot of guys, and you talk to Andy Kotelnicki, who's the offensive coordinator for Kansas, a lot of guys who can do a lot similar things, a lot of things. And they're interchangeable offensively. It's not one guy say, hey, you know, you're a deep guy, or you're an underneath guy, or you're a reverse guy. Everyone can do it all. Yeah, when talk, Patrick Mahomes talked about the Kansas City Chiefs this year, he said, hey, fantasy guys, don't pick a guy, because it's always going to be somebody different. Very similar here with this Kansas Jayhawk offense. Two tight end formation, quick hitter. And the pass is incomplete, but there's a reason for that. There's a flag down. Daniels was looking for Quentin Skinner. But it's going to be a defensive flag Pass against Duke. Defense, number zero. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. The young guy, Chandler Rivers, who is exceptional, right? He breaks on balls. Watch him read the quarterback. He reads quick. He reads quick, and then he drives on the ball. And just a little bit early there, and that's why it's incomplete. But uh, I'm just letting you know, double moves on both sides are going to be open. We saw one already completed by, Can uh, by Duke, but Kansas can do that same thing because the Duke defenders are very violent as they attack and try to get past breakups. Full house backfield. Quarterback keeper Daniels to the 39. You had Cam Dillon holding on. Dillon came in last drive when Dorian Mayusi had to leave the game. So Mayusi is still out. Dillon, the transfer from Columbia, is in the game. Dillon originally from Finley, Ohio. That's Northwest Ohio. Played in the Ivy League. And now playing in the ACC for his final season of college football. I guess he graded really well in the win last week. Yeah, he when played he got really the start well. for Mayusi. He did. It's a good Set. job of him not overplaying that run play and staying for the quarterback. This time the give. Highshaw loses the helmet. Won't be an issue. He'll have to leave the game, but there's a lot of depth at that running back spot. Assignment football is so important when you're playing a team like Kansas because of the multi, mul multipleness, if, if, if that's a word, of the offense, right? You got the triple option game, and then you got the true read option game, and then you got the RPO, and then you got the deep play action that looks exactly like the RPO. So many different things you have to have truly disciplined eyes if you're Duke's defense. Kansas already over 100 yards here in our first quarter in rushing yards. Third down at five. Daniels. That'll be a first down. Close to midfield, it's Luke Grimm, the junior, his first catch on the day. It's a very nice job. It was kind of a spacing stick slant route where he goes to the slant, he sees that there's a linebacker in there, and then he comes, works it right back out. Very nice job, and guess what? The quarterback is right on the same page, can throw him into the window, throws him open, anticipates where he's going to go. That's a very nice pick, pick up on first down. Luke Griffin, Jr. Down. from Raymore, Missouri, just outside of Kansas City. Daniels. Tight end. It's caught. This is Casey. And the hero of last year's Texas win, Jared Casey, his first catch. Here we go. Take a look at it right here. He's going to go in a blocking position. He's going to fall down. He's going to get up, and then he's going to get across the field. He blocks, falls down, he gets up, and then Daniels has a presence of mind and gets the throwback and finds a nice play. I don't know if he's designed to fall down. We had a play at that University of Michigan where you called the tight end to fall down and be an actor, and if he did, he's a very good actor on that play. Called it why high, right? High on the ground. Gain of 23 on that play. Look at Neal. Lost the football. It's loose, and Duke has it. Jalen Stinson comes up with the football. We told you that Duke has been super opportunistic defensively. Case in point right there. What a 
job by Anthony Nelson. You're going to see him coming to your screen. He's retracing from the line of scrimmage. Boom! The ball's out right there. Very nice job. And when you have defensive linemen that continue to play hard and, and don't give up on plays, just because the running back's through the line of scrimmage, very nice job by Nelson. It can result in huge plays. They've got one there. Kansas was knocking on the door before that fumble. Now with 33 seconds remaining in our first quarter, Duke's got it back. Last time they had it, they just blitzed down the field. Jordan Waters in the backfield next to Leonard. Waters. Oh, man, just trucks the defender. Ran right over Marvin Grant. We got a flag down. Marcus Woods is our referee. He's been quick today. It was before the snap. So you would think it had to be on the defense because you usually stop oh. the play or no they picked up. No flag. Up. I think they I, I think they might have thought that it was a legal formation, not enough guys on the line of scrimmage, but they did have the bunch to the, to the field and then a tight end that's a big guy that might have looked like a line. All right, chance for everyone to catch their breath. We have made it to the end of our first quarter. It has been the game that we were hoping for. Both teams with seven, 15 minutes into our game. Start of our second quarter, Duke has the football. It's a 7-7 tie, Duke and Kansas. Second consecutive year that these two schools have played. Last year, Duke won convincingly in Durham. Second down and two. Jordan Waters has the first down. We're going to see Waters. We'll see Jalen Coleman. We'll see Jacquez Moore. A lot of options to run that football for Duke. I won't be surprised to at some point see hard play action. The safeties for Kansas are very aggressive down in the box to try to stop this running game with Waters. On first down, a pass from Leonard. And that is a rare incompletion for Leonard. Week one, he completed his first 15 passes against Temple. Week two, he completed seven in a row before his first incompletion. Against North Carolina a t a week ago, he was 11 for 12 to begin the game passing. So he normally starts out with his hair on fire. That's his first incompletion after two completions in the first quarter. He's only throwing two passes in that first quarter. More the man in motion. Coleman. Coleman forces his way out to the 39. Pick up of six. It'll bring up third down. It's a very nice job by Rich Miller. He sees the center pool and then meets him on the other side. Now that's going to pick up a lot of opportunity for Duke to go on a naked bootleg and get the tight end coming across with the linebackers responding to their keys so quickly. The other linebacker, number seven, Lorenzo Macaskill, has to move faster to try to get over the edge because Miller did a great job there. Four-man rush. High, caught, and dropped and dropped it was never a catch Jordan Moore was not the intended receiver but the ball found it into his mitts and he couldn't hang on I mean that's about as lucky in a good way for Duke as you as you get you get this and then oh no and then oh so much going on very nice job by Logan Jr. being in position to make that play on that ball because that could have been a big pickup on first uh, for first down Kenny Logan, pass defended. Porter Wilson, his first punt was 64 yards. This one not nearly as impressive. The ball will be at the 24 when Kansas starts on offense. Kansas and Duke from Lawrence in a moment. Got the football right now, and it looks like they're going to play without Devin Neal, who was under that blue tent for a while. He's off to a great start, Devin Gardner. Yeah. Uh, but Devin Neal landed awkwardly when he fumbled the ball. Yeah, without question. He gets tackled here, but look at that right arm reach out, and then big 59 falls directly on top of him. That, that's something that you've got to take a look at if they can't continue to run the ball the way they have. So this is Daniel Hyshaw in the backfield. They like Hyshaw quite a bit. He's out to the 27. It's a gain of three. Yeah, Hyshaw is no slouch. Right? 
Devin Neal has 204 yards on the season on 28 carries. Well, Highshaw has 26 carries for 170, right? So he's been running the ball. He's a big part of why this offense has been so good in the rush game as well. It's kind of surprising. The last time Kansas had this many yards in the first quarter, they did it four years ago against Oklahoma. Mm. Second down at seven. Quarterback Daniels has been impressive. Both with his arm and his legs. Here's a blitz. They beat it. Highshaw. Oh, they trumped him. What a wonderful play call. Highshaw spinning. Look at Highshaw go. What kind of speed do you got, young man? Get there. He does. What a play by Daniel Highshaw. Seventy three big ones. What timing we just talked about him being no slouch and being good for this offense attack the blitz You learned that day one of camp attack the blitz and when you attack the blitz good things can happen But the rest of this is all high shot. Excuse me. Pardon me. I'm making my way to the end zone What a run to take the lead Good golly Kansas, extra point pending. Borchilla, and it's a 14-7 lead for the Kansas Jayhawks. Highshaw just had his Wally Pitt moment on the field because Devin Neal is injured, and look at Highshaw go. They'll be talking about this one 30 years from now. Welcome back, everyone. 12.35 remaining in our second quarter. Uh, in Kansas today, man, you need a shoehorn to get inside the building. 47,000 to sell out, and they've seen uh, the longest reception of Daniel Hyshaw's career with a bullet. Before that 73-yard touchdown reception, his longest reception, Devin Gardner, was 21 yards. I mean, this is his longest day receiving already, and, and we're just getting started here. It's a great job of Daniels recognizing what the defense is trying to do to him, getting the ball out quickly, and allowing his runner, pass catcher, to do the rest. So, the Duke Blue Devils back on offense. Riley Leonard, sophomore center. And we have a flag. Flag came relatively late. Look at that. All sides would be a little faster with the flag. Yeah. And then, would it be a holding on, on, the on a ball that went through the back of the end zone? That's it. I mean, I guess you technically can hold before the ball gets down. But that's, talk about needless. Man. Marcus Woods is our referee. We've only seen him once. Only one penalty called so far in our ball game. Coming out of the woods, I guess, right now. The end of the play. This is 44's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Oh, my goodness. On a touchback, you get an unsportsmanlike conduct which is a 15-yard penalty. Talk about a boo-boo. Man. They call it on 44. That's Cornell Wheeler. Well, after the touchdown for Kansas, they, they give wonderful field position to Duke. Leonard wants to, to throw. Man, he's attacked. Pass is complete to Jordan Moore. Jordan Moore came to camp thinking that he had a chance to be the starting quarterback, was in a fair battle with Riley Leonard. Leonard won the battle. They moved Moore to wide receiver, and he has flourished catching passes. That's a 13-yard gain. It's a nice job by Leonard. Sophomore quarterback, you call a shot on the very first play, and you have to be able to trust your quarterback that he's not going to just take the shot because you called it. He doesn't like it downfield. He drops his eyes and gets the ball to the flat route accurately, which allows him to run. It ends up being a big play. Handoff, Jalen Coleman. Not a lot there. Number 22, Jalen Coleman. Eric Gilliard's getting some playing time right now for Kansas. Normally one of the backup linebackers, but they're rotating through guys. I mean, I love the technique of the linebackers. Uh, Gillard comes, he scrapes, and then he takes on the blocker and, and kind of creates a, a bit of a pileup that, that uh, leaves nowhere for Coleman to go. 
Gill, you're normally the backup to Rich Miller, but they don't have Rich Miller in the game right now. Coleman, look at this guy. All on top of Marvin Grant. That's the second time that Grant's been trucked. Marvin Grant. Uh, this is this is special. You get on and it this is one on one. I lift. Oh my weights. Goodness. Oh my goodness. My goodness. Marvin Grant's a transfer from Purdue. Lower you to track it, young fella. That's a gain of nine tough yards for Coleman, Charlotte native. First down, Duke. Jordan Waters back into the game, replacing Coleman in the backfield. Waters escapes the first tackle and is brought down at the 32. Tackle made by Melo Dotson, who immediately goes to the ground, holding his right arm. Dotson, one of the starting corners, makes the tackle and needs to be looked at. It's a great job by Leonard getting the ball out quickly, attacking the blitz. But Dotson goes down and hits him low and immediately grabs that right shoulder. Got a timeout. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. Got a chance to tell you about for Kansas. One of their corners, Melo Dotson, uh, had to leave the field just a moment ago. Duke is driving, so this is a story. Dotson is being looked at on the bench. In his stead, playing one of the corners for Kansas is number 18, Kalen Gervin, Jr. from Detroit. In case you're wondering, yes, he is related to the Iceman. George Gervin, their cousins, both from Detroit. Riley Leonard gets it to Waters out of the backfield. And Waters inside the 20. Kenny Logan makes the tackle, but that's a gain of 12. I just love the way this offense is built. Coach Kevin Johns does a great job of building answers in for Leonard. On this play, it's kind of like a, a fake naked bootleg where you're going to get routes coming all the way across the field, and, and you want to have those shots taken. But if not, you have to find a way the eyes go straight to the flat and gets the ball to Waters for a first down. Duke trying to answer the touchdown scored by Kansas a moment ago. Quarterback keeps it. And Leonard got thumped to the ground, brought down at the 16-yard line. Tackle made by Marvin Grant, gain of three. Got to remember, Leonard is a, is a superb athlete, long jump, triple jump, high jump, basketball player in high school. He's a guy that can move his, with his legs uh, just as well. He had a long touchdown a week ago. Obviously, maybe not to the level uh, of Jalen Daniels, but he can pick up yards with his legs and be quite dangerous. We have not seen Rich Miller, normal Mike linebacker, in the game on this drive for Kansas. It's been Eric Gilliard replacing him. Down to the 11 goes Waters. It'll bring up third down. Now, obviously, in Kansas, they've got depth this year, yeah. and they're using that depth. But yeah. I, the red zone. I, I don't love it. I, I don't love it. You know, the emotional leader on your team, not to mention, he's your best linebacker. He is explosive, and you got Gavin Potter out there, and, and you can see that the, the runners uh, for, for Duke are picking up a lot of extra yards after contact, right? And it's because at, at contact, they're just continuing to drive their legs, and that doesn't happen with Rich Miller in the game. Third down and two. Line to gains the nine. Waters in the backfield next to Leonard. And Waters has the first down. Eight plays on this drive, and it's now first and goal for Duke. Again, another example of, of the linebackers at, at contact, right, being moved, right? That contact's made behind the line of scrimmage in, in that, or, or at the line of scrimmage where you're going to stop them from getting the first down, but the drive of the legs from the running back continues to move the linebackers, and they pick up the first down there. As you can see, Rich Miller standing anxiously. You see he was almost out of the white going on trying to get on the field just a second ago. And they put a tight end in motion, Nicky Del Molin, and there's a flag down. No play. It's going to go against Duke. Ball start. Offense, number 62. Five-yard penalty. First down. Left tackle, Graham Barton. It's a small, small flinch. I love the referee there able to see these tiny flinches with all the motion and different things going on. Like, he's, he, it was a tiny movement. 
but they they caught him. Staff talked lonely about him. Talented, talented left tackle, and, and thinks he really has a future at the next level. Leonard swings it out trying to get a quick hitter. Nothing doing. That's Calhoun. Jalen Calhoun brought down by Kobe Bryant. He's just one. It's a nice job by Lonnie Feltz. Right? He's going to get in and he's going to redirect and run straight down the line of scrimmage. And a mm. great job on the outside by Kobe Bryant. And then Lonnie Phillips comes and cleans it up. We had Kansas last year. He was Jacoby Bryant. Mm -hmm. This year said, no, 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 no. I'm ready to go. Just call me Kobe. Said, I ain't a freshman no more. You, 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 call me Kobe. Ten play of the drive. Second down and goal. Leonard. He's got wheels. Oh, my goodness. Bryant stones him at the five. And it was Bryant who took the worst of it. Football is a violent game. Yeah, he came in low. And I'm just telling you, even, even a, a guy that's not at, that big in Leonard, a knee to the head is not something that you want to take. Yeah. It's a nice job of coming off of his guy and, and making a play and getting him to the ground. And, mm. and it's a nice job getting his head out of the way, right? He moved his head to use his shoulder. And, and I think that's what took the brunt of that, uh, that hit. So now both corners, Bryant and Dotson, have left the field for Kansas on this drive. It's third down and goal. We should tell you that Melo Dotson has made it back out on the field. He was out earlier this drive, but he's back out there now. So at least one of the starting corners is available this third down play. Yeah, and they feel really, really comfortable with Kalen Gervin as well. Uh, he, they looked at him and, and Kobe Bryant as kind of a 1A, 1B guy, and they both got a lot of reps. So uh, they're, they're intact in the back end. But down here, you're going to get a heavy dose of Waters and Comey. Third down and goal. They choose Waters in the backfield with Leonard. Four receivers. Leonard. No chance. Just hoping right there, looking for Pankel. Nice defense played by Kalen Gervin, earning the scholarship. I love it. Oh, that was an outstanding job by Kalen Gervin of technique. Discipline eyes, discipline footwork. You, you try to get an out route, and he sat all over that. The thing is about it, when you're so close down here at the five-yard line or inside the five, there's nowhere for the receiver to go, so you shouldn't retreat. He does a good job, doesn't retreat, sits there, and he's there to make the play, nowhere to throw the ball for Leonard. Charlie Ham has been a 50-50 proposition this year with that right foot. Four out of eight. 22-yard attempt. No worries for Ham. So a three-pointer. Made by the Duke Blue Devils to make this a four-point game. 6-17 remaining in our first half. Ah, I like that. Almost like the hand was showing up as three-point form as he was going to the sideline. Somewhere J.J. Reddick smiling. 12 plays, 70 yards. Longest drive of the game for Mike Elko's Duke Blue Devils. You know, Devin, it's a really cool environment to look at this stadium and see 47,000 plus, maybe 50, just enjoying themselves on a you perfect 74-degree Saturday afternoon, late September, two unbeaten schools. What else do you want? Doesn't get any better than this. Touchback. Ball about to the 25-yard line. Well, we're just getting started. Tonight, the Big 12 lighting up in prime time on Fox. You got Deuce Fawn leading K-State against Dylan Gabriel and the sixth-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. That's tonight, 8 Eastern on Fox. 
Deuce Vaughn is special in the running and passing game, and it's so fun to watch him play. We had a few of his games last year, and he is explosive. And Gabriel has been playing really well in his new digs. All right, Jalen Daniels. So far today, 137 yards passing, 57 yards rushing. Set it up to the tight end, Jared Casey. He is brought down after a short game. Darius Joyner comes from his safety spot. Try to get a screen there and get the off the lineman out on the edge to block, but it developed a little too fast, and the off the lineman weren't uh, 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 able to get out there. And the officials call a timeout as we have a Duke player down. Aeneas Peebles. So Peebles is being looked at. We'll be back to Lawrence in a moment. Here. Looks like making to the Duke sideline. I like the fact that Mike Elko choosing to leave the sideline and go look at his player. You talk to the Duke people and everyone associated with that football program has just been beaming about the hire of Mike Elko. You're taking a chance when you get a guy who's never been a head coach at any level before. He never has been. He's been a defensive coordinator at some big time stops, but never the head man. And so far, so good. Three wins, a lot of optimism, an exciting brand of football. And a, a healthy Mayusi back at linebacker. Jason Bean is now in the game as the quarterback for Kansas. This is Bean. He can run. But no room there. Jalen Stinson snipped it out. Not a surprise that Jason Bean's getting some tick. This is a guy who is an uber athlete. Yeah, he's, a, he's extremely talented, but I don't understand that one. Just because you have a guy that can do all those same things, right? You would think it would be like some, some type of trick player or something like that. To just get him a rep, I, I don't think that's smart because now you're sitting here at a third and long and, and Jalen Daniels has to trot back out there. Let's see if Jalen Daniels can pick up this third down and eight. Four-man rush. Daniels tries a seed, and it's caught. Man, he can really sling it. Luke Grimm, his second catch. Oh, man, this is good quarterback in here. You got Luke Grimm, who's going to release inside, right, and then fade back out, right? It's cover two, and the ball is placed in between the safety, in between the flat corner, in the hole. That's exactly how you draw it up and what you want your quarterback to do if they leave enough space, and you got to have the arm strength to do it. Nice job by Jalen Dang. 19 yards on third down and eight. Highshaw crosses the 50-yard line. Devin, I remember talking to Les Miles two seasons ago when he was still calling the shots at Kansas. He had Jalen Daniels as a 17-year-old mm -hmm. starting at quarterback, and a lot of people didn't see it. Yeah. But Les Miles was like, you know what? This guy is special. He's going to be a special quarterback. And, uh, there wasn't much there. But clearly, this guy is special. It just took a while to figure out the scheme and figure out his confidence level. Yeah, I mean, coming in last year, he didn't get a real opportunity. He had some arm troubles in camp, couldn't really put his foot on full display, but they know now. Sevian Morrison, that's the first carry for the transfer from Nebraska. Tackle made by Darius Joyner. Said that before. Previous play, Highshaw's shoe came off, so he had to jog off the field. And we haven't seen Neal since Devin Neal left the game on his fumble when he landed on awkwardly. It's a loss of a yard for Morrison. So another third down. Can Daniels do it again? Again, that ball gets out quick, and it's another first down to Grimm. Luke Grimm has been Mr. Third Down on this drive for Kansas. Love this concept. Very simple. We call it dragon, where you have a slant route and then a quick out that you call a drag right here out in a slant. And you just read it out. Read it out, and boom. They go over the top to try to make the play. Gets the ball out quickly. That's the important part. You said it right at the onset. He gets the ball out so quick that the defense cannot recover. Nice design and a nice job by Daniels. 
So Kansas knocking on the door again. Balls at the 41. Lachlan and Morrison in the backfield next to Daniels. This is the give. And again, not much there this time for Lachlan. Lachlan's been a big play guy. Actually scored a couple of touchdowns a year ago against Duke. Had a nice special play last week in the win against Houston. He's their Swiss Army knife. He can do everything. Came in, he was a wide receiver. They had nothing at running back, it seemed like a year ago. So they moved him to running back. He helped out there. So he has that unique ability to run the ball between the tackles, but also be a pass catcher. And he's been big for Kansas. First man through. Morrison is going to make it third down after a nominal gain. Already on this drive, Kansas has converted two third downs. So you've seen him go in the hole, and then you've seen him go short to pick up the first down. Uh, interested to see where they go this time. I, I think over the middle. I think the Duke defense is playing a little bit of middle open. If they go middle open here, you could get a guy, sneak him in the middle. Out of the backfield, it's the tight end. Cardell. And another big play for Cardell, who scored a touchdown in the first quarter. I mean, Daniels just has a beat on what Duke is trying to do. They stay with the middle safety, and he just gets this ball out quickly to the tight end. They keep a middle safety in the field. That means that it's soft on the outside. They have to shake out the, the, the switch releases, and he gets the ball out and finds the right guy again. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage, and Daniels is forced out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. We've got just 105 remaining in our first half. What that last first down did for Kansas is it should assure that Duke is not going to get the ball back here in the first half. Duke does have three timeouts. You know, the one thing we haven't been able to see uh, that we saw just on that last play is his ability to create and run in the pass game because he's been able to get the ball out quickly or find an open target. We haven't seen him, but he's special in that right when he's able to use his legs. And getting down here tight in the red zone, his legs are going to come big in part, it's even on pass plays. to the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Grim again! There is a flag down. Luke Grim, a touchdown! And Kansas leads. Billy's the crime. He's going to play the touchdown. Just a fade route. He stutters and, and gets on the outside. And I'm just telling you, this is no fluke. This is no fluke. The, the offensive line misses a block. They get through. Daniels moves to his left just a bit and drops an absolute dime on the outside. Perfect timing, perfect trajectory, perfect throw, touchdown. It was pass interference that was declined, so the degree of difficulty for Grimm was ratcheted up, and he still made the play. I mean, I saw him do this a week ago against Houston, where he moves just a little bit, finds a way to get the ball in the end zone. How about Grimm in this start? Coming up on the State Farm Halftime, Clemson and Wake Forest open up ACC play with a big top 25 matchup. Number one, Georgia looks to continue their early season dominance, and fourth-ranked Michigan faces his first test in unbeaten Maryland. We'll have it all for you at the half right now. Eric and Devin, back to you. Mike, thank you so much. Looking forward to it. We're looking forward to catching a little bit of a break, too. Good golly. Look at this. Kansas in front of a sellout audience for the first time in three years. They have scored three touchdowns. All of them have come through the air, courtesy of that gorgeous right arm of Jalen Daniels. What a special player he has become. Out of nowhere, seemingly. Yeah. Yeah, here goes this next level quarterback and I keep talking about you're going to have number 92 Peebles who's going to break through. Look at the eyes of Daniels. He never even looks at him. Never even looks. He keeps his eyes down the field, moves just a little bit left. That's the feel of a quarterback. And then the throw. I mean, what a dot dropping dot. This is what he's doing right now. National player of the year offensively a week or play of the week last week. And he's been even better here in our first half. You're saying of the year he might be on his way to that if he keeps playing the way he's playing. 
11 out of 12, 200 yards, and three tutties. And we still in the first half. Dude's defense is looking like this guy is supposed to be the runner. <laughs> Riley Leonard passes complete Jalen Calhoun. Second catch for Calhoun, third time he's been targeted. His first catch was just for a yard. This one a little bit better. But uh, Duke's got to go a long way in a short period of time. 56 seconds remaining here in our first half. And now the clock moving again. I love the young sophomore quarterback being trusted to drive the ball down. Leonard has to throw it away. In hot pursuit was Jeremy Robinson, junior defensive end who has really stepped up for Lance Leipold's bunch. Now you got a bit of a decision to make. He was a flag on the play. It's 48 seconds left. Do you go quick three and out and leave time for Kansas to get the ball back and get another opportunity while they're extremely hot on offense? Oh. Holding offense, number 55. Senior on penalty. Second down. Correction. First down. Andre Harris, big man from Oklahoma City. We should mention uh, defensively right now for Kansas, they do have Kobe Bryant back in the game. Kobe Bryant had to leave last time that Kansas was out there defensively, but he's back out. So the two starting quarters, Dotson and Bryant, are on the field for Kansas. Leonard underneath, passes caught. Calhoun, second catch of this drive. That'll stop the clock at 38 seconds temporarily. And if Duke is serious about scoring, they might as well call it timeout, right? Yeah. He does a good job of getting a lot of it back and keeping them on schedule. This is a, a nice job just coming over the middle of the field. You see him set it up, set it up, and then come underneath right through the middle. Nice job. The guy who made that tackle, Mello Dotson, is actually still down on the field. He's just got it up. This will be the second time that Dotson has left the field in the second quarter because of an apparent injury. So despite the injury, this is a timeout taken by Duke. Now Duke is going to get the ball to begin the third quarter. So there doesn't necessarily need to be like a huge sense of urgency to get some points here. But it would be some gravy. You could punch in at least a three before you have halftime. Mike Elko would be a happier man. It would make it an eight point game knowing that they're going to get the ball to begin the second half. Yeah. Two basketball first schools are playing good football here in 2022, trying to get to four and all. Yeah, blue bloods, Devin. Let me coach up a little bit. Blue blood. When you think about blue bloods in what basketball, what are the blue bloods? Look, we're talking traditional powers. Like mm. you go back to the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, all the way up to right now, and you always know that Duke, Kansas, North Carolina, Kentucky, UCLA, and Indiana are going to be tradition-rich, positive, winning programs contending for national titles. Well, so one would ask, and you know, I ask. And all these blue bloods have to be perfect in football, by the way. I know, right? All of them. And I said, well, what about Michigan? Is Michigan a no. blue blood in basketball? And you said no, but no. you said they did have a stretch in the 70s. In the 70s, 70s Ruth, yeah. Tom Jadovich and those what? Okay, all-time wins. Look at this. This is what we're talking about by Blue Bloods. You got Kansas and Duke separated by just a handful of total victories. Final four appearances. That's a bunch, folks. And national titles, a combined nine. That's Blue Blood. Man, that's Blue Blood. The blood before it hits the air. What? Science? I don't like know. that. <laughs> Second down and five. Oh, what a catch! What a wonderful bit of hands by Coleman. So people are going to say it's inaccurate, but it's a great job because Riley is trying to hold him up with the ball before he gets to the next defender. He's trying to hold him up, and because of that tip, the defender jumps outside trying to go get the ball. He switched the defenders, and now they're in business. 26-yard gain. Leonard, he can scoop. Leonard he is brought down, but he's close to the first down marker. It's going to depend on the spot. Craig Young credited with the tackle. Should and be a quick timeout. Yep, it is. So the second timeout for Duke. 
Talk about the poise of this young freshman and the, the ability to know what ball to throw at what time. We already saw him drop a dime down the field, and then he throws a back shoulder there to hold his and protect his receiver from getting hit. And then the receiver does the rest and makes a big play. And then he finds a way to run and get yardage. This is, this is a masterful drive to finish uh, this first half. I apologize, folks. I thought that it was Duke that called the timeout. It was Kansas that called the timeout. That doesn't seem like it would happen. Well, I, I guess if your defense is getting gashed, you got to try and stop the bleeding somehow. No. But with 24 seconds no, remaining. No, Duke, it had to be Duke. There's no way. Kansas would not do that. Uh, we were told on good authority that the timeout was called by Kansas. Wow. It's a question for the postgame show. Well. All right, 24 seconds remaining. Duke still has two timeouts. Leonard, tons of time. Oh, almost picked off by Dotson. Mello Dotson. Boy, was that close. And so you always wonder, where, where's the mistake? Right, because Raleigh threw it as a, a down the stem route, but Coleman was coming in like a cur curl route. Either way, it could have proved disastrous. Third down and two. Kansas running a defender in late. Taiwan Berryhill comes in. They're going to run it with Waters. And Waters doesn't make it there. Waters is tackled by Caleb Sampson. And it's now fourth down. So Duke will have to settle for the field goal attempt, right? So we think. All right, Mike Elko has not put out the field goal kicking unit just yet. It's fourth down and one. Their kicking situation is not great. Coming into this game, Charlie Ham was just four for eight. Are they really going to go for it, or is maybe this just a hard count to try and get an extra five yards if Kansas jumps offside? They do have an extra timeout, but it looks like it's a lot, a lot of communication. And unless this young quarterback is a great actor, it looks like they're going to try and really go for this. And they do. And they get it. This is Waters. Now they'll have to use that timeout. Uh-oh. They're going to try and Waters. clock the ball because of the first down stoppage of the clock. They're going to try and clock it. And you see Coach Elko is trying to get the ball clocked. So they don't have to use that timeout. You know what? We, I mean, we need time. to go back. We need to go back. Duke is out of timeouts. When we said that Kansas called the timeout a moment ago at the 38 second oh, mark, was right. that was not correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought for sure. I was wondering, there's no way that, that Kansas would use that timeout at that time. I mean, I guess there's not no way. You know, two double, neg double negative there, but uh, I guess, the, yeah, no. It's not likely that they would have used that timeout. All right, so the field goal unit's going to come on. Charlie Ham and Mike Elko saying, let's hurry up, fellas. This will be big if they can get points here. Play clock is down to two. Not going to get it. And they don't get it off in time. Mm -mm -mm. out Kansas, their first game clock operator. Please reset the game clock to seven seconds. Wait, we're, what? We're having issues here with who's calling timeouts. Marcus Woods, our referee, said that that was a Kansas timeout when there was about to be a delay game. I just can't. But once again, I can't believe that that's the case. But we've seen crazier things, I suppose. Oh my! That's a, that's going to be five yards back. And, and like you said, the, the kick of the situation is not not great. You know, that's not this is not a guaranteed field goal here. Uh, is he trying to ice him? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's an yeah, icing situation. Okay. But he didn't see that he would get he would get a free five yards on that. All right, so this is what it is, folks. Seven seconds remaining in our first half. Charlie Ham made a field goal earlier to get him to five for nine on the year. This is going to be a 37-yard attempt. Hams kick, little sidewinder, sneaks through. So it wasn't a thing of beauty, but it counts for three. 
It's another triple, a three-pointer for the Duke Blue Devils. Who said that before? I think, I think Kansas might have tipped that, and that's why it looked like that. Because, you know, they reacted right away like, oh, it's not going to be no good because I think they touched it a little bit. But it got, but that goes back to if you get the five-yard penalty, right, that might be a block and maybe return for a touchdown. You just don't know. But it looks like that ball might have been tipped. Yeah, you see it start to wind the other way and start to turn. Man, that's that last that last kind of exchange between teams, the timeouts and different things like that. That was kind of weird. Just as a reminder, Dukes can receive the second half kickoff. We've got a one possession game. Three seconds left in our second quarter. Kansas leading by eight. Possibility for a return here. 7 Morrison is the deep back. And he'll watch it sail out of bounds behind him through the end zone for a touchback. So Kansas is just going to take a knee. Jalen Daniels, who has been all world here in the first half, takes the snap, takes the knee. And he'll head into that locker room. So a fun, well-played first half from Lawrence. One possession game at the break. Now let's head into L.A. for the State Farm Halftime Report. That's right, we are here. Our Everything we could have wanted on a Saturday afternoon in Lawrence, Kansas. Just a gorgeous weather day and a gorgeously fun first half to watch. So far, so good for Kansas. They lead over Duke 21. To 13 is our score with my partner Devin Gardner. I am Eric Collins. Uh, both these sides playing so good to begin the year, and they played well on offense, at least in the first 30 minutes. Both sides did. Yeah, without question. And we talked about it in the open. It's because of the quarterback play, the precision, the ability to get through the reads, the ball placement. It's all been outstanding. Let's start with Jalen Daniels. He goes one, two, three. He's to his fourth read back across the middle with a perfectly placed ball and then dropping dimes with pressure in his face. Look at that ball placement. I mean, it's a white glove in there, and I'm just telling you, that's a defensive glove. The ball's perfect. No defense for a perfect ball. And what about Riley Leonard? He gets through his reads. He rolls right. He goes one to the right, two, three, and then gets to his fourth read, a check down albeit, but gets to the right guy, and then his ball placement on the deep ball. I see your ball placement. I raise you another dime. These two quarterbacks are as advertised. We talked about in the open, and they are putting their skills on full display. Both of them young guys, not a lot of reps. I mean, whoever quarterbacks around the country, you might want to look at Duke and Kansas because the way these coaches have been able to, to develop them with, with such little time is very special. And the quarterback rating for Daniels in that first half through the roof. Also ran for 59 yards as well. So Daniels a bit of everything as he has been all season long for Lance Leipold and the Kansas Jayhawks. One of the great stories in all of college football. All right, Duke's going to start on offense. Remember, they won the coin toss back in the first half and they decided to defer the option to the second half. On the return and that is Stinson. Jalen Stinson upended. Let's take a look at the first half possessions. Riley Leonard and Duke, first time they got it, just terrible field position. Started at the one. They were three and out. Scored a touchdown in lightning fashion the second time they had it, then a punt, and then back to back field goals. You know, I mean, that Kansas defense is, is trying to find a way to bowl their neck. We saw a lot of uh, uh, substitutions with the linebacker position. Uh, I would imagine that. Rich Miller is going to start the, start this drive. Let's see if they can keep those guys out there, right? Because you saw a lot of Duke success, especially in the run game, came with Rich Miller off the field. Two tight end formation. Del Molin and Finney are your two tight ends. Jalen Coleman in the backfield with Leonard. This is Coleman. And Coleman ran into a thicket. Lonnie Phelps, the transfer from Miami of Ohio, with the tackle. I haven't mentioned his name a whole bunch, but he has been an eye-opener. Former All-Mid-American Conference player, Lonnie Phelps, from Cincinnati, Ohio. The other Queen City, if you ask the people from Charlotte, North Carolina. Gain of three, second down at seven. And nothing doing at all. Jordan Moore is brought down in the backfield. That's a big-time loss. Malcolm Lee. Good scout 
cutting there. So nice Plute, job by, by Potter out here on the on the left side of your screen. He gets Verkwin underneath the block fast, and both these guys defeat their blocks and get to the runner and create this long down the distance. Line to gain is the 29. It's third down to 13. Leonard caught right at the sticks. I don't know. It's going to depend on the spot. It's going to be short. Jalen Calhoun needed 13. He got 12. Oh, what about the route? He goes on a post corner comeback, right? Sticks his left foot in the ground. Post corner comeback. What a route, but just a bit too the 55. shallow. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. Oh, my. It's a hold on Andre Harris. And Kansas doesn't decline it. Well, okay, I guess you're going to push him far enough back that there's really. On the right side of the screen, number 55 gets beat quickly. The, the guy you were just talking about, Lonnie Phelps, who hadn't made a splash just yet, he makes a splash off the wall quickly there, and he has nothing to do but hold him. Am I the only person a little bit surprised that Kansas didn't just decline it? It would have been fourth down and one. Yeah. All right, third and 21. Not a lot to do here with Duke. Probably a conservative play call. Or maybe not. Leonard has to run. Uh-oh. Gave himself up, was pushed from behind, and a flag comes out. Lonnie Phelps is the man down. Uh, see, when you give a team an extra down, which is what Kansas did, you can't make a mistake with a penalty. I'm really wondering what the penalty is going to be. It's the hit on the quarterback. I mean, he gave himself up there. Yeah, he did start to slide first. Yeah, he does hit him. I think, I think I agree there. So. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Man. So Kansas would have had the ball back. There's no way Duke was going to go for it on fourth down and one from Man. 28. They give them an extra play. And because of the penalty on Phelps, it's a first down and 10 for Duke. Man, that has got to hurt the opening drive. You do a good job. You get him off the off the field just by the hair on your chinny chin chin. You give them extra down like you spoke about. And now Duke, Duke is going to start rolling. Moore's the man in motion. Now reverses field. Coleman. Trying to rip the ball out. That was Craig Young, number 15. Dreaming big dreams. It's a gain of four. And Coleman asks to come out of the game after taking a hit. He's replaced by Jordan Waters. That's a shoe issue. Quarterback Riley Leonard actually leads Duke in rushing. He's got 29 yards on the ground. Waters. That defense is flying around right now for Kansas. And people who have watched Kansas football in recent years wouldn't recognize this defense because of the way they can come you at you in waves. It's not just the starters. They go 22 deep, and these guys all can play. A lot of transfers sprinkled in. They got good in a hurry. Third down. And Kansas trying to make a late change defensively. They have to call a timeout. First, 32nd timeout. Sorry, full timeout. This isn't hyperbole. The biggest sporting event on the planet returns to Fox Sports, and for the first time, it's taking over the holiday season. The FIFA World Cup live from Qatar, starting November 20th on Fox and FS1. Uh, my favorite has been the commercial of Santa Claus sitting by the pool, sipping my ties, you know, <laughs> thinking he's on break. He's like, wait a minute, they're doing what? This is my season, right? He has to get back to the North Pole and get ready. Third down and six. Third down and six for Duke. Opening possession of our second half. Leonard caught. That's more. One quarterback to another. 
Jordan Moore was beaten out by Riley Leonard in fall camp. Switched to wide receivers, and he's been a revelation. Up vertical press, boom, and across. Very nice job of getting to the toes of the defender and then breaking across wide open. And, and, and how about Leonard having the, the courage to throw that ball over the middle with guys on the way you had uh, Rich Miller up in his face, reaching up, and then a linebacker behind. Very nice job, very nice throw, nice pickup on for first down. Moore was working on the safety, Kenny Logan. Leonard wants a bunch deep incomplete wonderful defense by Melo Dotson and so often defenders panic when they get in this situation Melo Dotson doesn't panic at all runs doesn't touch runs 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 find the ball and then up that is textbook defense. I mean, what a play by Dotson. And, and now you see why it was so important that he got back in the game. Remember earlier in the first half, he had he gone out with an injury. What a play, and to not have a, even a chance of pass interference. Waters. Tackle made by Lonnie Phelps. It'll bring up third down. This is just the fourth meeting between these two schools. Kansas lost last year, but Kansas wins today. The all-time series would be tied in two. First meeting back in 2009. 2009, 2014, 2021. And today. And hey, remember, the third down, they can pick this up. This drive was supposed to be over about 15 plays ago. Waters spun down short of the line to gain. Marvin Grant. Coach Lipo said they needed to dis disguise their intentions, disguise their intentions for this young quarterback. Very nice job. Rich Miller is lined up almost outside over the slot, and he blitzes from that position into the middle of the defense and is right there to hold the running back up. And Marvin Grant does a great job of finishing. Fourth down and one. Power football. Inside release if they do blitz. Waters not going to get there. Blown up immediately by Eddie Wilson. Eddie Wilson, who came over with the coaching staff from Buffalo, makes a huge play. And what about O.J. Burroughs? Sacrifice, sacrifice himself. Go on and give it everything. Rich Miller in there to make a play. How about that Kansas defense making a stop? Duke's trailing Kansas by eight. Duke had it for 10 plays just a moment ago. They go 43 yards, but they give it up on downs. And now Kansas back on the field. And Devin Gardner, they began this season one of the best rushing teams in the country. Just phenomenal numbers. 13 rushing touchdowns, fourth in the country after having 15 and 12 games all of last year. Now this year, today's game, more the same. 115 rushing yards in the first quarter, but not so much in the second quarter. I think it's because they went to the pass a little more, and Devin Neal was out, even though his backup is very, very serviceable. Big fella, number 20, Daniel Highshaw, who we saw in the passing game, but I think some of that is because the balance, right? You know, you start getting Duke, getting more guys in the box, and you have the capability with your quarterback to drive the ball down the field, right? So they didn't have to depend as much on the run game, but, but Neal being out is, is a real thing. It's not everything, but it is something. Seven carries, 62 yards for Neal before he had to leave the ball game. They stay on the ground. Highshaw makes a man miss, and Highshaw to the 36. This guy is tough to bring down. 17 yards. Darius Joyner made the tackle and is still down on the field. I'm just telling you, that should have been a two-yard loss. It should have been a two-yard loss, but Highshaw High does a great job of breaking that first tackle and then getting into the secondary. His joiners being looked at here on the field. All right, this should be a tackle right there, but no. He breaks through, tries to strip the ball out. He, he's gone, and then he starts to drag his way for extra yardage. It's tough to see what it could be there. I don't want to speculate. 
But uh, that, he got kicked. The person was making a tackle, and it could be the you know the wind knocked out all the oh, oh right yeah. in the stomach. He got kicked right yeah, there. All right, that heel in the stomach. I've never had a heel to the stomach, but I'm just telling you, probably isn't great. There's no pads there. Uh, you know, quarterbacks you usually do, but he's not. Oh yeah, soft. I remember Roy. Ra <laughs> <laughs> this guy here. <laughs> I remember Roy, Roy Roundtree had gotten his his ribs broken. And so he started to have to wear after he was healthy enough. He started to wear the uh, the rib cage. Roy Roundtree to play receiver at the University of Michigan, but even when he was healthy, he just kept it on, right? So he's the only receiver running around looking like a quarterback. Like, wait, is he a backup quarterback? No, he's not. He just doesn't want his ribs broken. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Roundtree is outstanding. All right, University so Joy is still being looked at. How about Lance Leipold? When he was at UW Whitewater, there were none better. He's at a Division III school. He won six national championships during his time with the Warhawks. And translated that to playing a head coach at Buffalo, two-time Mid-American Conference Coach of the Year. This is now his second season at Kansas, having taken over for Les Miles. He's been a winner everywhere he's been. Yeah, he knows exactly what to do. He knows how to change a program around. Uh, that's no easy feat. You know, people say, oh, it's Division Three football. No, it's football. And, and he was able to win six championships in that at that level of football and then goes at goes to to Buffalo and does well there and brings a lot of those players that he kind of molded to Kansas and a lot of the reason why they're, they're so good. Daniels winds up and delivers high looking for Grimm. Grimm was a big deal in the first half four catches 55 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, you remember in the meeting I talked to Co coach Kotoniki and, and, I, and I said you know there's not a lot of flaws in Daniels's game right there but there's one thing I think he can work on it's the over route right he, he and, and we were trying to figure out is it because he gets to it late or what's the case because I know he can throw it and, and it's sometimes he gets to that overall just a little late maybe feet aren't in place and you saw there he missed high on that one. Grims the man in motion. Devin Neal's back in the game. First time we've seen Neal in a while. What a bullet. Gorgeous pass. Oh Touchdown, my. Lawrence Arnold. 36-yard <laughs> bullet. And Kansas has done it again. It's the fourth passing touchdown today for Jalen Daniels. What are we watching here? This is about as big time. Just take a look at two running down the field. Another hole shot. I mean, this is a direct line from his hand to his hands for a touchdown. This kid can throw. I mean, he can really throw. And more importantly, he can pass. And there's a difference there. Borchilla. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Makes it a 15-point lead for the locals. Something special is happening in Lawrence, Kansas. How about Lawrence Arnold? A tutty from Jalen Daniels, the largest lead of the day for either side. Welcome back, everyone. It is a 28-13 lead for Kansas, 8-25 remaining in our third quarter. Four plays, 62 yards, and another touchdown throw from Jalen Daniels, his fourth of the game. And I know we haven't even started conference play. Well, technically Kansas had. They, they won on the road against West Virginia. Yeah. But who's playing better right now in the country than Jalen Daniels? I mean, it's, it's slim pickings. It's slim pickings. He is outstanding in, in the details. I, I think is what's most important, right? The, the placement of balls. And, and you know, you you don't you not just got guys running wide open, right? He's placing this ball perfectly, and 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 the running ability. We haven't even been able, to, been able to see as much of it, right? That's one of his better runs. But he's just been able to put the ball in the right place at the right time so often. There, you saw pressure in his face with an absolute dime, and then. This is, I mean, there there are a lot of guys that can go left hash, old shot to the field, right, which is the wider side of the field. Old shot to the field before the safety can get there. I mean, he's been spectacular today, and obviously he's been spectacular all season, back-to-back -back player of the week. You know, some smart people are going to start to whisper Heisman when yep. they start talking about yep. what he's done. I mean, I don't want to say it. You know, got game to go, season to go, but wow. Two years ago, this guy was bottom of the barrel and I say this you know with a lot of love I had a chance to watch him you know play as a 17 year old true freshman quarterback in 2020 and Jalen Daniels was overmatched and that's being nice the way he has turned around his game just startling startling closing down the eight minute mark of our third quarter Duke they've got to get busy down by 15 passes high and Moore can't bring it in 
I'm sorry, that's Pankle. Third down at six. Transfer from Purdue. Marvin Grant getting a whole bunch of reps here today and, and does a great job of separating, not going too high where he gets a penalty, but putting his shoulder right in his chest and just dislodging the ball. Another one of those Detroit guys that come from Detroit to play here at Kansas. I mean, they've got a bunch of them and they're making plays, including Rich Miller. Four man rush. Close to the line to gain. It's going to depend on the spot. It's going to be short. And there is the aforementioned Rich Miller in the passing game making a play there, and he is very short. What a play by Rich Miller. Not very short. And a half yard short. And it looks like they're going to go for it. Oh, this is, I don't like this. Especially the way it kind of shook out the last time you went for it. I, I want to expect a hard count here. But like we talked about earlier, he's doing a lot of communicating. So unless he's just as great actor as a sophomore, they, I, I anticipate they will try to get this ball snapped. Fourth down and one. Leonard caught. And the chains will move. That breathes life into this Duke offense. Jordan Moore with the reception. They're down 15, and the way Kansas is rolling offensively, they can't afford to be giving the ball back with empty possession. Yeah, it's a very nice job. Get your quarterback on move, because now he can run and go get the short yardage, or he can throw it, and on the outside, it did a kind of a pick play. I remember this play we had it at the University of Michigan called River Rub, or Lake Rub, rolling left or rolling right. Great job of rubbing the wide receivers in, and creating a lot of space for more. Looking for the tight end, Del Molin. Did he keep a foot in bound? He did. It's a short game. Pickup of two. Haven't called Del Molin's name a lot. It's just going to be a quick out there, and Riley once again gets through his reads and gets to this, this throw. It's a short game, but that's a nice catch. Uh, you can't see, you know, the white shoes. Looks like he got his foot down, but oh, the officials right there. No one had a better look truly in the building. So we play on. Second down and eight. Again, Del Molin in motion. Inside handoff. Coleman, oh my goodness. Whacked by Marvin Grant. In that first half, Martin Grant was getting trucked. He has come out with his hair on fire here in the second half. Man, it's like the, he listened and he said, oh, you mean to tell me Coleman lifts weights? Well, I also lift weights. My goodness. Here comes a boom. Grant was on the receiving end of some of those blows in the first half, but he said no longer. Put a little more air in his helmet, strap the shoulder pads on a little tighter. He's come out to play. And the previous play is under review for targeting. Uh oh. Yep. I think this is a no brainer that he turned his shoulder and used his shoulder. I think he was very intentional with it. I've been wrong before, but I don't think that this one is going to be a targeting call. So we stop play before a third down and two. Anxious moment for not only Lance Leipold, but also clearly for Marvin Grant, who wants to stay in this game. If they rule this is targeting, Marvin or lead the game and have to stay out for the first half of next week's game. Yeah, I mean, that's all shoulder almost. I mean, it's, it's kind of tough to see from that angle, but you can see his head kind of turn and, and almost hip check. You know, in, in hockey, we see that hip check all the time. Looks like that's what he was able to do there. You'll get a better look. All right, Mike Pereira is with us to give us some heads up and some insight. Mike, what'd you see? Yeah, I, I see this as not targeting. I mean, it's a big hit. I mean, we all reacted with a ooh on the big hit, but to me, he's leading with the shoulder. Has to be crown of the helmet because the runner is not considered defenseless. So he's got to lead and attack with the crown. And to us, it looks like he's leading with the shoulder, and I don't think you can confirm any aspects of this being targeting. Yeah, Mike, could you talk just a little bit about the new rule of the crown of the helmet and how it's been kind of changed in, in, after the referee gives us an answer? After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Yeah, they really have redefined the crown to say that it's really a six-inch diameter on the top. They want you to be head down, leading, almost looking at the ground, and so They've done a good job, I think, with this rule and even going back to kind of protecting the player to make sure that all aspects of targeting are confirmed to eject the player. And in this one, I can see why it was stopped, but it was good that they didn't call targeting. Mike, thank you for your expertise. All right, we move on. It is now third down. Third down and two. Coleman. 
going to depend on the spot. And the original look, I I'm not sure. Are they going to spot it with the left foot or the right foot? Man, Rich Miller is outstanding. He jumps inside the, the, the blocker and then finds a way to get back out and stop the runner before he can get to the line of the game. They didn't get there. Then I can bring up the sticks. It's fourth down, and Duke, no hesitation. They're back at the line of scrimmage. They've already gone for it and converted once on this drive. I mean, the way Kansas has moved the ball on offense, you almost have to do this, right, because you just can't see yourself stopping them. Uh-oh. False start. Wow. So that'll make the decision easier for Mike Elko. False start. Outfit, number 62. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Graham Barton. What Kansas did on, on, on that play is they shifted the defensive line, and then the linebacker started to shift as well, and you're going to see the, the, the guard or, or tackle there starts to move and get in position when he sees Rich Miller go into the line of scrimmage. And I think that's what made him move there. So Porter Wilson comes on. Two punts today for Porter. 64 yards and 42 yards. And it'll be downed inside the 10. That is a 58-yard punt for Porter Wilson. Job well done. Jalen Daniels in Kansas. Offense back on the field in a moment. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. Happy days are here again. Lawrence, Kansas. They found something. Lightning in a bottle. This offense has been legit. You take out that kneel down end of the second quarter, and these are the last three full possessions for the Jayhawks. I mean, these aren't short deals, right? These are long drives where Duke is able to flip the field, but this Jalen Daniels-led offense is just able to convert and make huge plays, especially when they need it. Devin Neal is in the game for Kansas. He's a receiver, bottom of your screen. Daniels. That's the first fluttering pass we've seen all day long. Everything else has been a tight spiral. Daniels is 12 for 15, 236 yards, four touchdowns. He's also the leading rusher on the team. Junior from Lawndale, California. Actually had a transfer, went to two different high schools out in Southern California, the LA area. Wasn't getting any playing time, and it didn't look like he was ever going to get any playing time. So he had a chance transfer just to get on the field as a high school player. Good, strong run. High Shaw brought down by one of the safeties after a gain of five. I like that was Daytron Young that got in there and make that, made that play and got him just by his shoestring. Young familiar of playing against Kansas. He's a transfer from Iowa State. Third down. Is this Luke Grimm territory? Can outflank the defense right away down here. There Daniels. Pass is complete. You see it. The leverage is there. At Skinner. Quentin Skinner with the grab. You can see the defender is inside just a bit. If he presses him vertical, he'll really have the leverage. And if this ball's on time, it can't be stopped. Nice catch by Skinner, making sure he's a blazer, right? And Daytron Young knows that, so he has to retreat. And once he retreats, that ball gets there on time. First down. Jason Bean is now into the game. You got Bean in the backfield with Daniels. They fake it to him, and they get it out to Arnold. Lawrence Arnold to the 45. There's a lot of different things that they can do offensively. They've got weapons all over that they can line up in the backfield out wide. How about Arnold's patience in the route? He goes outside vertical and then comes underneath. Oh, what a route. And then a perfect throw right on his face mask for another sizable game. Gain of 14 for Arnold. Arnold had a touchdown earlier in this third quarter. Tight end Casey. 
And the give is to Neal. This is Neal's first carry since leaving in that first half with an apparent arm injury. You can see he's got a little a, a, a little adoration to his uniform there on that right shoulder, some extra padding to try to help uh, take some of that shock off. Remember we saw him with his arm extended and a big guy landing on him. It's always tough and, and, and usually leads to a shoulder injury, but he's out there back and he's accelerating through contact, and that's very good to see. for Neal and Neal has set up for a first down I think the shoulder's all right right he uses his right shoulder to run over a guy I think he's doing fine and when you add him with high shot in the game as well I mean this offense is nearly it seems unstoppable I and mean, this is a good job of the offensive lining hooking and getting to this outside zone but he used that right shoulder and lowers the boom there looks like he's all right so now Neal job well done he'll exit the game They fake the high shot, and Daniels is sacked. That's the first sack all season long. Coming in off the edge and making a play. Joshua Pickett, the corner. It's a loss of four. That's the first time all year that Daniels has been sacked. I mean, this is the maturity of Daniels, too, because he wants this, but he doesn't like it and pulls this ball back. Right, don't make a bad play worse. You didn't like what you saw. Don't throw the ball in the coverage just because you want to get the ball out. Take the sack and live to play another down. Nice job by Dickey coming on that corner blitz. Second down at 14. Skinner makes the first man miss, has the first down, and out of bounds. That was a well designed and well executed play. You usually don't love three on three in the in the bubble game, but when you have Skinner on the motion, yeah. full speed, he outflanks the defense right away. And now you just got one guy to make miss, and you can go get the yardage needed for a first down. That's a nice job, once again, of Daniels knowing what he has, knowing what he wants to get to, and getting to it quickly. Well, they called a penalty on Kansas. So negate the big play to Skinner, negate the first down, and they're going to be moved back to the 45-yard line. Oh, that's a crusher. That's the way the third quarter ends. We'll sort it out for you when we come back. But we have one more quarter to play. Kansas leads Duke 28-13. Feels like it. Not a guy that's been targeted. Four fingers in the air. We've made it to winning time. The fourth quarter. Kansas trying to hold on. They've got a 15-point stiff arm on the Duke Blue Devils. But they were driving, Devin, and they lost some yards. This is called a holding on the receiver, Douglas Emilian. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a whole bunch there, mainly because number 30, Brandon Johnson, doesn't quite fight to go make the play. Usually you don't see a call, but it was called, and he does have a hold of the jersey in the shoulder pad. So nice call by the referees. But you want to see the defender fight and try to go make that play so it's very clear there's no real no real question on whether it's holding or not. So instead of a first down and moving closer to another score, it's now second down and 21. See the numbers through the first three quarters tilted heavily in favor of Kansas. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Kansas calls a timeout before they run a play in the fourth quarter. That's, that's the second time out used by Kansas here in the second half. Lance Leipold hoping it doesn't come back to haunt them. Well, tonight the Big 12 lights up in primetime on Fox. Deuce Vaughn going to lead K-State against Dylan Gabriel and the sixth-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. That's tonight at 8 Eastern on Fox. Uh, I think Deuce Vaughn may be one of the most skilled, uh, gadget, uh, Swiss Army knife type players in college football. He can catch it. He can run it. Returning kicks everything. I mean he is mr. Do-it-all for Kansas State for for so many years All right, so Kansas has got the ball second down at 21. They've already used a couple of timeouts here in the second half Grim's the man in motion middle open defense Quick hitter to Grim and Grim is brought down Tackle made by Shaka Hayward Grim's had a nice afternoon. That's now five catches 
Grimm has uh, got a sister named Maddie. He does not have a brother, so there is no brothers Grimm. <laughs> for those of you wondering, gain of eight, third down. He's been he's been special today. He's done a very good job and been very reliable for for Jalen Daniels, and, and that's a good job of getting some of it back, throwing a quick hitch, and now you can set up this third and long, but it's a bit more manageable. Daniels, not much pressure at all. Underneath the pass is caught by Arnold. Lawrence Arnold to the 36 yard line. That'll be short, but Devin, maybe it's close enough with a think about going for it. Yeah, I mean, it looks like everybody's geared up and ready to go. We saw him go for it earlier in the game on, on a few separate occasions, and it looks like they are geared up to go for it. So it's an 11 yard gain, bringing up a fourth down and two. I go hard count and then get to my play, but I would go for it here. Oh my goodness, movement on the line. Earl Bostic. Similar to what happened to Duke on theirs, you get the defensive end who reacts to the hike of the ball, but he doesn't cross the. The defensive lineman does a good job. He reacts to the snap of the ball, but he doesn't go across the line of scrimmage. And so now you get the tackle trying to protect, thinking he's jumping off sides, but he doesn't cross the line, and they're still going. Mm. Fourth down at seven. You don't want to try a bomb of a field goal. And I guess trying to put your foot on Duke's neck. They're going to go for it. Fourth down at seven. You got one on one coverage at the top. If safety doesn't lean help, he could go there. Oh, oh quick, quick kick. kick. What can't Daniels do? What, can he, what do? can he do? Just add that to the Heisman resume. He's a wonderful pooch putter, too. He can I love run. It. He can pass. And he can punt. He can FS1 College Football is sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. Kansas missed an opportunity. A couple of costly penalties last time they had the ball. They've got to give it up. So Riley Leonard and the Duke Blue Devils back on the field. And the numbers for Leonard. Notice that there are no touchdowns next to his name. Yes, he played very well, though, in the passing game. Looking for Higgins, second and ten. It's a rare overthrow there by Leonard. It's a stick route, quick, easy, quick out, and he kind of misses it. Now Mike Elko, before the game, was telling anyone who wanted to listen, there are no big games. There's just the next game. Duke didn't want to put any extra pressure on what they were doing. Not a lot of hype. They just wanted to see if they can get to 4-0. Oh. Right now, they need to get to work. Third down and long. Coming off the edge, Melo Dotson from his corner spot brings down Coleman. It's a loss two. This Melo Dotson is exactly what they want at the quarterback position. Sauce Gardner from Cincinnati comes to mind. Six foot one, long arms, can play in the pass game. We saw, but he also comes up and tackles like you saw there. Line to gain is the 18. Kansas has ta uh, four tackles for losses in the game. Big play for Duke. Oh, I think that's going to be enough. Hagens was fighting for everything he was worth to get to the marker. We talked about the ball placement at halftime, and, and how about this ball placement here? Dotson is exactly where you want to be. He's right there in position to make the play. Ball is perfectly thrown right in the middle of the face mask of the wide receiver, and he's able to power for a first down. Philadelphia kids got some Philadelphia tough in him. He needed 11, he got 12. Leonard gives himself up at the 25. That's the forgotten element for Leonard. Obviously, super accurate. He, he's made great decisions in the passing game, but his running ability is what really evens out the defense. They have to play honest because he will go pick up five on a passing play at any given moment. He also can add himself into the read option game as well. Leonard had a 56-yard touchdown run last week in their game against North Carolina A&T. Nothing happening again from his corner spot. That's Melo Dotson. All right, Devin Gardner, as a quarterback, if you notice this corner is consistently coming in and making plays in the backfield, 
Does that send off any alarms to you? Can you run something at him to take advantage of his aggressiveness? So what Kansas is doing is they're stacking their safety behind the corner, which frees the corner up to blitz, right? The safety stick, safety stacked over, and it's freeing the corner up to blitz. So if they can find a way to get a route on a safety, it would be great for them. I don't know if it's going to happen here. Not going to happen here. Third down and five. Leonard caught again. This is Moore. Jordan Moore across the 50. Jordan Moore has saved the day multiple times this afternoon for the Duke Blue Devils. Ball placement. Kobe Bryant is in perfect position. He's not your screen right now, but he's outside. He's got outside leverage, but he thinks he can get to the ball. But the ball is so perfect that there's no way for him to get there. He misses, and now it's a big game for Moore. 29 yards for the converted quarterback. Takes a shot there, too, as the ball's coming out. But you can see the focus of the head. Keep your eyes focused on the target. His eyes follow the target all the way down to the ground. Nice job by Leonard. Tougher than woodpecker lips. Jordan Waters. He's got it. It's an end around. Look at the throw. This is more. Nothing there. He'll run it. And he gets out of bounds. Made some chicken salad out of that. There was not going quickly in the right direction. But he picks up six, maybe seven, and will bring up second down. Remember, Moore was in a fierce competition all the way through camp to, to be the quarterback here at, at Duke. He played a lot last year, almost had about the same amount of reps as, as Riley Leonard did, and he was beat out. And in a week, he prepares to be a receiver, and he's been a big part of this offense, and he's been very talented. And then you get opportunities like that with gadget plays where if it's there, he'll be able to throw that ball and throw it accurately. Ten minutes remaining in our ball game. Duke won last year against Kansas. Leonard caught down to the three. Robertson with the grab. Look at this Duke team and look at how quiet things have gotten. Wow. The, <laughs> the ball placement, Eric. The ball placement. The defense is there. Inside run. Waters brought down at the line of scrimmage. Duke has had to convert a number of long third downs on this drive. I mean, take a look at this. It's just a deep post, attack the leverage outside, come underneath, stick foot in the ground, but the defender makes up, right? He's there. No, there's no defense for a perfect ball, and both these quarterbacks have been outstanding, and right now, it's Riley Leonard driving down. This drive started on the eight-yard line for Duke. Tenth play of the drive. Waters into the end zone. Touchdown. That's what Duke needed. Jordan Waters gets the touchdown. And now we're an extra point away from this being a one possession game. Just an inside zone or an outside zone that turns into an inside zone because of Waters' vision. Does a great job of seeing the end zone, sticking his foot in and getting there. How about that drive? That is good football up and down by Duke, led by Riley Leonard. This is an important extra point. No worries, Charlie Ham. Eight-point game. Don't go to sleep on the Duke Blue Devils. They still got a puncher's chance in Lawrence. 28-20 is our score. Two perfect teams. One will not be perfect when this is all said and done. Kansas leading Duke 28-20. 8.54 remaining in our game. The Duke Blue Devils picking themselves up off the mat, dust themselves off, and punching a touchdown. 91 yards, 10 plays. Waters the touchdown run, and we've got ourselves a ball game. I think both these coaching staffs continue to find out about their teams. Uh, Duke, right, being down and, and just not playing great, and Kansas playing so good, can they respond after being knocked down? And, and they have. And for Kansas all season, they've been started the game down 14, and, and, and they continue to play here. And how about the Lincoln drive of the game? Sponsored by Lincoln and the Power of Sanctuary. This is a drive that started on the eight-yard line, Devin. Yeah, I mean, remember, it, it was it was a drive that almost wasn't, but it continued, and, and I can't say enough about Riley Leonard as uh, Waters punches it in there. Riley Leonard and his ability on third downs and, and, and fourth down to make throws, accurate throws, pinpoint accurate throws to, to keep Duke in this football game. All right, Jalen Daniels, he has been Mr. Perfectly Fine so far in today's ball game. This has been magical. This is Lachlan. Corey Lachlan, they use him as kind of their gadget guy. 
Trying to reverse, loses the helmet. He'll have to come off the field. Second down for the Jayhawks. Kansas so far this year, they've already won a conference game. They went to Morgantown and beat West Virginia. Then last week, tough non-conference game, they played at Houston and won that one. Convincingly, 48 to 30, they had to endure a 69-minute lightning delay. Talk about adversity. They had the only lightning's been on the field. Caught! That'll be a first down. This is Arnold. Lawrence Arnold! Out of bounds as he crosses the 50. Quick feet, quick delivery, quick decision making. Lawrence Arnold does a great job of just getting in the vacancy of the defense and sitting it down. Very nice job, and the rest is all him. Yards after catch. This this offense is based a lot on that. Although Daniels does a great job of driving the ball down the field, the yards after catch are so important, and you saw it there from Lawrence. All right, if you see any reputable top five list for Heisman candidates that doesn't include Jalen Daniels, look away. There's an issue. That, just look away. That list is meaningless. Jalen Daniels is proving to everyone who wants to know that he is a stud. Here's Highshaw, high stepping it across the 40 to the 38. 12 yard gain for Daniel Highshaw. Highshaw is so tired of getting tackled by his shoestrings. You see if he's upset every single time because he's just an inch, a centimeter away from breaking a big one. And you can feel it. Kansas threatened right now to one possession game. Any points at all will make it a two possession game. On the outskirts of field goal range right now. First down and 10. Devin Neal back into the game. They fake it to Lachlan. Quarterback run. Look at Daniels go! Inside the 20. This is what makes him so dangerous. We haven't seen it a bunch today, but he still has it in his bag. They just cover it, right? Duke does their job. They cover it. But there's nobody in the middle for the quarterback. And because he hasn't run in the passing game so much today, they haven't had to dedicate a spy, right? So they don't have someone sitting there watching him because they almost forgot about him as a, as a runner in the passing game. And as soon as they forgot, he takes it down and sets up. Kansas with another opportunity in the race. He may get another 100 yard rushing game. Had it last week. He's at 80 right now. Quick hitter. And the tight end Casey can't make the play. Every once in a while Casey strikes out. <laughs> Second down at 10. That wouldn't have been an easy one. You had Shaka Hayward in coverage. Daniels with 311 yards passing, 80 yards running, four touchdowns, no interceptions, really hadn't even thwarted with a possible interception. And do it in front of a sellout for the first time in his college career here in Lawrence. People are starting to believe. Neil took a while to get going. Play was blown up by Hayward, who got into the backfield. But Kansas is bleeding that cluck. We're now under the six-minute mark. I think this is, is something that Kansas' team, Coach Leipold, they wanted to learn. Can, can we finish a game? I mean, they didn't done a good job of, of coming back, but they haven't been in control of a game and then finish the game, right? They were in control of this game from the start. Can they continue to keep their pedal to the metal and finish it? Duke has had a propensity for getting key turnovers so far this season. They need one here. Daniels. about Skinner who's going on a post pattern right but he sees Shaka Hayward and he shaved his route back to go get the ball <laughs> and saves his quarterback because Shaka Hayward did all he can do in his hook to curl pass drop what a combat catch a catch where somebody's making combat with contact with you at the same time Skinner makes it look easy Kansas would love to score but they probably don't want to score too quickly you always say that. <laughs> Daniels can't 
Keep him out of the end zone. Fifth touchdown accounted for for Jalen Daniels. Stud. They have found something in Kansas. He was player of the week last week, and I'm just telling you, there's another one coming. It looks like the ball's handed off, but no. Daniels into the end zone again. <laughs> Fifth overall touchdown, four through the air. He's really unleashed his legs here to, to finish this, this game. I mean, he has been exceptional. Borchilla. You betcha. And the lead back up to 15. Uh-oh. Kansas basketball taking a back seat right now to that guy. I don't think they need to worry about that. Yeah, this is a Kansas team that I haven't seen too many warts. They lead Duke 35 to 20. Remember Duke unbeaten on the year and it's been impressive so far this season, but they've been shredded by Jalen Daniels and this Kansas Jayhawk offense. Daniels says accounted for all five touchdowns for Kansas. Four through the air and one on the ground. And it's all within the framework of the offense, which is most important. All of it came within the framework of the offense. There's no force, hey, let's get him in the end zone type of thing that's going on here. I mean, this offense is, is explosive within that game. Oh my. Heavy collision. Robertson down at the 30 yard line. It's time now for the Old Trapper Smoking Player of the Game, sponsored by Old Trapper. What's your beef? No surprise here, right? Five total touchdowns. Started with that one there. And this one was exceptional. I mean, this ball placement that this guy is exhibiting, right? Putting the ball in the hole between the safety and the corner. And then obviously, in this fourth quarter, he's really started to put his legs on full display. I mean, how do you stop him? How do you stop him? You stack the box, he throws the ball. You, you, you get loose in the box, you don't leave a spy on him, he runs down in the middle of your defense. Not just the numbers he's putting up, it's just the game that he's playing, man. He passes every single test. Riley Leonard loads it up, fires deep. A little bit too strong, but a flag. You got Kalen Gervin in coverage on Moore. And that's going to go against Gervin. I mean, we talk so much about Daniels, but that'll be a perfect pass if there's no pass interference. Pass interference. Defense, number 18. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, Riley Leonard doesn't have the touchdowns, and I wouldn't say he's been as good. He's been good. He's put the ball where he needs to go. And, and if he doesn't grab the receiver here and stop him from going to get this ball, that'll be a perfect pass and a long touchdown for Riley Leonard. Almost good that he pass interfered because you don't want to give up a touchdown unlike the NFL. It's not a spot foul, right? It's a it's a foul that's only 15 yards and you saved your team 75 yard touchdown. Leonard, short completion. Gervin makes a quick tackle on Moore this time. And now you see the urgency that Duke is playing with offensively. It's been a quarterback clinic for bo from both guys. I mean, Riley Leonard has been pinpoint accurate and he was again accurate on that last throw. Second down at six. Bounce pass. That was a Steve Wojciechowski bounce pass. <laughs> you, I mean, you always got to yeah, assume right. the ball slipped out of his hand, right? Yeah, I mean, okay. he's, right. Been, he's been so good all day, you don't see him bouncing dig routes at 10 yards to the, to the receiver. Third down at six. He's been good in this situation, though. Look at that. That's a man who is confident. Kansas showing pressure. They only bring four. Leonard, safety valve is Waters, and he's appended. It is made Kobe Bryant. Fourth down. I mean, there was nothing there for Riley Leonard. Right, he had a dig to the top of the screen, two guys. Had a basic, two guys. He's got a, a vertical, two guys on him, and, and he has to go to the check down. It's just not enough. These Kansas corners, man. They come like to tackle. come up on run support. Fourth down to three. This is it for Duke. Incomplete. Any flags? Yes. Multiple flags. 
This is going to be pass interference on Dotson, I think. Pass interference. Defense, number three. Ball being placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Eric, I don't know. I don't like it. I think he was right on time. But we got to take a look at this. Top of your screen right here. He's going to break on this ball. Jumps over. Yeah, I think that that's a bad call. <laughs> that's another good play by Dotson, but it's called pass interference. That is a special play. He jumps over him and reaches around to get his hands in front before the ball gets there. Right as the ball is getting in, excuse me. I mean, that is a nice play, but a fortuitous play for Duke, who gets to keep the ball. Still hope for the Blue Devils. Leonard goes down. Lonnie Phelps. Man, we talked to the staff about Lonnie Phelps and how he was trying to replace Kyron Johnson, who's now playing linebacker for the Eagles, right? A pass rusher specialist, and he gets on the edge and makes a play here in a big spot. Second and 17, nothing there, and a vicious lick. Oh, good. That's oh. Jordan Moore, who just was victimized by the Malachi Crunch. Powder came from the other side. I mean, they may take a look at this. It was not necessarily high. Defensive receiver is something they're going to look at. Hopefully, that Moore is okay. Just an incomplete pass a moment ago to Jordan Moore, but Moore paid the price, Devin. Oh, without question. Potter comes from the other side and, and lowers the boom there. And, and so, what you want to look at is he defenseless? Yes. Right? But is the contact with the helmet? No. And is it above the head or neck area? I don't think so. Right underneath the armpit. So it's a legal hit and uh, just a tough, hard nose football play. So Moore's not on the field right now, had to leave. Third down at 17. Clearly four down territory for Duke. Running out of time. Leonard. Try to get everything he can. And that's enough for the first down. How about that? On third and 17, Leonard uses his legs to keep the game alive for Duke. Remember, we talked about it. He's a guy that can do that. Superior athlete in high school. He did basketball, high jump, long jump, all the most athletic things, and he can pass. To the end zone, touchdown, Jalen Calhoun. And don't go to sleep on Duke. They still think they're in it. And he can pass. This sophomore quarterback is good. Just a go route once again, and the throw is perfect. It's perfect. Mm. The defender can't even respond. Man, this this has been a quarterback clinic on both sides. All right, here's a vital, absolutely vital extra point attempt. Charlie Ham. All right, so the game continues. One possession game. Duke down by eight, still with a ton of time. Two minutes, 40 seconds. Duke has all three timeouts remaining. Once again, the ball put in a perfect position for a receiver, either team, to make a play. Uh, the, 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 the defense has been very good by these defensive backs. They've been in position, but the pinpoint accuracy from these quarterbacks and, and the latest addition uh, adoration is from Riley Leonard on this play to Calhoun. Now, can Duke find a way to get a stop. That's what's important here. They've got all three of their timeouts, but they just haven't been able to corral Daniels, Hyshaw, Neal in the running game. And with 240 left, you, you're probably going to start using your timeouts early and, and hope to stop them, but it's tough, right? Just because I think that Coach Leipold and that coaching staff, they trust Daniels to put the ball in the air as well, knowing that he doesn't want to have incomplete pass, so they're going to give him nice, easy throws to make. Let's see what Duke does and see if they can find a way to create one of those turnovers that they've created in past games. Yeah, the reason Mike Elko is calling the shots with the Duke Blue Devils is because of his work at a number of different high-level spots as a defensive coordinator. He is now... Trying to come up with something defensively to stop Kansas. Oh, a little short kick. They didn't really need to do that, but they chose to do it anyway. All right, I guess no problem. So it's going to be Kansas ball with really good starting field possession. Free kick out of bounds. Kick it deep. Five yard penalty from the ball went out of bounds. First down, Kansas. Take a look at some college football mayhem with our mayhem moment sponsored by Allstate. We're going to take you back to the first half and a run by Daniel Hyshaw.
This was just tremendous, Devin. I mean, so conveniently named the mayhem moment because it was, th this is the play. This is a nice play. This is the play. And I think you guys remember it. If you're not here, it's one of the best plays you'll see in college football. But this is an outstanding catch by Calhoun that we, we just saw. And at some point, we will get you that mayhem play, though. Don't worry about that. First down at 10, great starting field position for Kansas. And the tackle's made at the 50-yard line. That's Devin Neal. And the clock is stopped. So no gain. That's who the mayhem play is going to be about right there. Number 20 in, in that, uh, they call it crimson. It's red, but they call it crimson right there. Duke uses their first time out. This is the upcoming schedule for the Kansas Jayhawks. It is a Big 12 schedule uh, that starts at home against Iowa State next weekend. Yeah, I mean, th th those teams on that schedule, uh, they, uh, Kansas has a bone to pick with them because last year it was devastating throughout that schedule. I'm just telling you, they better bring their, their chin straps and, and, their, and, their, and their girdles, if you will, because this Kansas Jayhawks football team is not the Kansas Jayhawks football team of old. Kansas already 1-0 in Big 12 play. They took down West Virginia in Morgantown two weeks ago. Second down at 10. Daniels, the quarterback. Again, nothing there. Two consecutive plays have not netted a yard for Kansas. And Duke using their second timeout. So because of that short kick that went out of bounds, the field is essentially already flipped, if you will. So when they get a chance, if they don't choose to try to get this first down, if they don't get it when they punt, they'll already back Duke up. The question here is do you throw, try to throw the ball and risk an incompletion and allow uh, uh, Duke to save one of their timeouts? Or do you say, hey, they'll just have one timeout, 85 yards to go or whatever the case may be, so we're going to give our, our talented quarterback a chance to put the ball in the air and, and knowing that he could possibly make a great decision and, and get the first down. I think if you get a quarterback who is on a run like oh, he's throwing a, If I'm the coach, it's, it's a pass play. Yeah, yeah whatever you sure. want. Defense, you're going to have to bow your necks if we don't get it. Third down and 10. <laughs> Conservative. Neal barrels forward for three. It's now fourth down. Interesting. Now, Lance Leipold has won six national championships as a college yeah. coach. I'm not going to question him by any stretch of imagination, but I would have thought that you'd be a little bit more aggressive. Oh, without question. But like I said, you, you make them use this final timeout, and then because of that short kick, that's why you said you didn't need to do that. Now it's going to be an 80-yard drive. Like, there is no, there's going to be nothing shorter than 80 yards unless they get some kind of great return. And so I think that Coach Leipold is saying, I trust my defense that they're going to be able to stop them 80 yards uh, no timeouts, if, if, you, if, that, if, you, if that makes sense. So, I mean, I, myself personally, I would have given my quarterback a chance to go get that first down, but I, I can understand the reasoning here. I say win a game, you get a chance to win a game. <laughs> but I've never been paid to make those big-time decisions. Yeah. All right, so Kansas is going to punt the football away. Vernon's had a... A nothing day. It's his first punt. <laughs> it's his first punt. It's his first punt, 222 remaining. Hopefully he's all sweating the palms. Spinning kick. What? Oh my goodness, a fair catch at the five. It'll be a 95 yard drive. Oh. All right, Reese Vernon, you've earned your keep. One kick all day long and it's a beauty. Fair catch at the five yard line and Duke has got the entire field to look at if they want to keep this game alive. Wow. Well, like I said though, It'll be it'll be at least 80, but now we see it's going to have to be 95 yards with no timeout. And, and I'm going to be quite frank with you. It's unlikely, but they do have the guy to do it. Riley Leonard. I don't know why Calhoun. That's a that's a question for him and his special teams coordinator. Let it bounce going the end zone possibly. All right. Turn the page. First down to 10 balls at the 95. Duke, they need a touchdown and a two point conversion. Great start. Jalen Calhoun, who caught that fair catch 
at the five a moment ago where maybe someone raised an eyebrow, yeah. but he's just atoned. Welcome back. I said it just before. You have the guy to do it. Riley Leonard, I mean, throwing an absolute strike going along the same way he's played all day. And Calhoun atones for that terrible decision in the punt game. 40 big ones for Calhoun. And gets out of bounds to boot. Leonard. That's a pretty good Zuzu. Oh, and Potter got him late. Oh my. Gavin Potter got him late. That'll be an extra 15. Wow. After the play, personal foul. Lay hit out of bounds. Defense number 18. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, I'd actually give Potter the benefit of the doubt. No, he's definitely in bounds. Yeah, he but went out of bounds yet. Because he's kind of giving himself up and going out of bounds, and it's on the Duke sideline. You just can't do it. Why? Why this extra hit? Why do you need to do that when you see these going out of bounds? It's within the rules. He's in bounds, but a smarter player has to not make that decision. So five yard gain plus the 15 yards. It's a plus 20. And the Duke Blue Devils are cooking with gas right now. They've got the ball at the 34-yard line. 60 yards, first two plays of this drive. They have no timeouts, but they've got an eternity left on that game clock. Leonard. Is that deflected? Looking for his tight end, Del Molin. If I'm Riley Leonard, I am not throwing in the direction of Kobe Bryant. He burned Texas a year ago. He burned West Virginia earlier this year. If there's an out route to the Kobe Bryant number two in in in, in that red or, or crimson, whatever they want to call it, don't do it. Get the ball somewhere else because he's been known to burn guys. And if so, you want to go that way, I'd go double move and it could be a touchdown. Double move. Mm -hmm. Right now, Bryant is in front of Pankle. Leonard, little dump down. Nothing there at all. He would have been better dropping that. Robertson with the catch, short gain. Clock will continue to move. It's easier said than done. You know, you, you, you sell a guy, oh, if you would have dropped that, it would have been better because it's a minimal gain. But you, you can't, your kid is not just going to drop the ball. Craig Young has to leave. Barely got off the field. Uh-oh. The catch is made, but it's fourth down. As again, a very short gain. And now the game is on the line for Duke. They don't have a timeout. They can't think about it. They do have a bunch of time on that play clock, but they've got to get this first down if the game's over. I would go out and up for for the game what? versus Kobe Bryant. I would go out and up for the game versus Kobe Bryant at the bottom of your screen. They need to get to the 23-yard line. Kobe Bryant continues on the way he's played the last few weeks. Kansas holds on. Now they just need to take a couple of snaps, avoid disaster, and they're going to go to 4 0. And the entire country is going to start screaming about the play of their quarterback, Jalen Daniels. They'll need to do it again. Wow. When we talked to the coaching staff. They talked so glowingly about Jalen Daniels and how he really didn't ever get a fair shake. And, and they thought they had something, but they couldn't ever get a, quite a good look at it and see what they had. And, and his personality wasn't something that they thought would be conducive to success and being able to be a leader on the team. And they said, now the personality he has is perfect for leadership. He's in it with everybody. Everybody believes him, in him. Everybody loves him. And it's not just because of his play on the field. He's in the building watching film extra all the time and not trying to be the look at me guy. And all his hard work is being put on full display. Last two games, Jalen Daniels has accounted for 10 total touchdowns. And Kansas, they're 4 0 for the first time in 13 years. Wow, what a turnaround! That's going to do it. It's a win for Kansas and Lawrence in front of a sellout crowd. For Devin Gardner, I'm Eric Collins. Now let's send you back to LA for more college football coverage.